And we're live. How's it going, everybody? This is Dylan from Dylan Talks Tone. I even have a thing that says that. You put it up on the screen just like this. Uh, how are you all today? It is Thursday. It's 5 p.m. And uh, for those of you that are new at the channel, we do a video every Tuesday and a live hangout every Thursday. And so that's what this is. Basically, um, one of the easiest ways to know what's going on all the time is if you go to um, patreon.com uh, Dylan Talks Tone it's patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone there is a link in the pinned comment in the description of this video um, Leslie actually mentioned it to me today she said you should mention how much content is over there because we have um, a class every fourth Sunday and then every fifth Sunday when there's a fifth Sunday um, that's been going on for a while. I added it up. There is 16 and a half hours of content over there um, that most of the world has never seen. And it's all guitar setup stuff. Um, well, there, there's a bunch of things. It's very, very cool. Uh, so you can go over there and check it out. Uh, even if you don't watch them live, there is a replay version of Patreon over there where you can just um, get them replayed. You know uh, like 30 days later so that's the way that works pretty cool so um, anyway I just wanted to share that with you uh, that's how and, and basically the other thing too is a lot of people ask questions over there and we make sure that we feature them in our live on Thursdays so that's that's how this works uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through some FAQ stuff Please make sure you put some stuff in the chat as well, because we'll try to get back to that. Um, also, uh, you know, and super chats are cool and always appreciated, as well as um, whatever. Just just hang out. So I'm going to get through some of these questions, and then I have some cool stuff I was going to tell you about, too, because um, we got some, some neat things going. I bought some stuff this week, and et cetera. And I'm trying some stuff, and I want to share that with you as well. So, and see what you think of it. I want you to try it too. So, let's we'll do that. Um, we'll, we'll get to that here in just a minute. So, Alejandro asks, Do you know if there is a tool to actually see, like the drawing on your site, a pickup's magnetic field? Something cheap to buy or easy to build with medium knowledge in mounting electronic circuits, whatever. Actually, you know what? We're going to get even easier than that. I will show you what it is. There is a link in the pinned comment. I already put it there. It's this stuff right here. I'll throw this stuff up on the screen so you can see it. Um, it's called Magnetic Viewing Film. And it is a cellophane with something in it, metal particles or something. I are, See, you last purchased this. I already bought this. Um, and when you put magnetic stuff underneath it, it shows you the shape of the magnetic field around whatever thing you put underneath it. It's very, very cool. You can kind of see some of the illustrations there. Um, there is a link to it in the description of this video. Or actually, it's in the pinned comment, the top pinned comment. Um, as you saw, <clears throat> I think, what did it, was it $8.96 for a sheet, no wiring to do, and everybody could do it. Um, I think it's really cool. <laughs> it's just, and I don't want to say it's a gimmick. It is an actual measuring device. Like it's supposed to be pretty accurate, but I used it a few times and tried to use it for some videos and stuff. And it ended up not looking, it didn't show enough like on camera for me to show you what I was trying to show you it didn't it didn't work on camera as well that's actually why I end up using the graphics in the videos that I used because they better represented what I was trying to show you um, but in person it's very interesting and I you should try it for eight bucks it's it's pretty cool it's and again he wanted something something cheap so let's see hi Dylan have you ever used fast fret or would you recommend using it? My skin complexion is extremely corrosive on all brands of electric guitar strings. So I wonder if Fast Fret could help me extend your their lifespan. Um, so 
I don't know if it'll ex help extend your lifespan of the strings. If you've used that stuff, I put a link to it in the pinned comment, the same pinned comment. That's what I'm going to start doing when we talk about stuff. Um, and then I also use, I also put there the lizard spit stuff that I, I like. Um, I do know it makes your strings feel slicker. I think it does keep them clean and you can tell when you wipe off with, you put it on there and if you wipe it off with a rag or whatever, it does, um, it does make it feel cleaner. It, you know, it, it cleans the strings pretty well. So I think that's pretty cool. I don't know about longevity. Obviously keeping your strings clean does make a difference. Um, as f you know, the, the assist, the acidity of your sweat and stuff that has more to do with other stuff that I don't know about, but trying to keep your strings clean is definitely a thing and I would definitely do that. Um, yeah, I like that stuff. I like, I, I have, you only used the fret, whatever that stuff's called fast fret a couple times. Um, but I've used the lizard spit stuff a lot and I, I really do like it. Um, I'll put it on my strings and not wipe it off if I'm going to store the guitar for more than a few days. Um, you know, if you're not going to play it for a while, I like that. Uh, let's see. Is there any reason why the base plate under the bridge of a pickup of a telly couldn't have its own ground wire instead of being soldered to the pickup? Just like you did with the neck pickup cover in Tuesday's video. Yes, you could do that. Um, you would just need to make sure that you there was a hole in the guitar so you could put another wire to ground the bridge itself because remember that when you separate that wire the gr the bridge is no longer grounded which means the strings are no longer grounded so make sure that you run a separate wire to the bridge itself and to the pickup and to the positive so you'd end up having a bunch of wires for no reason is really Um, Ivan says, I think I asked this question a few weeks ago, and either I asked in the wrong place or I missed your answer. <clears throat> Are Stumac Parson Street pickups line worth the money? I don't know, because I've never used them. You did ask this question a couple weeks ago, but, you know, you're a Patreon patron for a long time, and a good customer, and a pretty nice guy. And you watch all the videos, and you hang out a lot, so I'll answer it again. Why not? And, actually... I even bought a strap last night. So there's only one left of this run. Now we can make more of these and it will be f much faster than the last time because it's less COVID-y and we've got, we've got a plan now. It just took way longer than I wanted it to the first time, but it won't take that long this time. I only have one left. Look at that. So sick. Um, there it is. Yeah. They're leather. They're double layered. They're like padded feeling. Super awesome. And this is the other end. Uh, I can't remember how long they go, but they go really long. They're for really tall people can still use them. And they're on the website. I've got one in stock. And if we sold a bunch of them this week, I could probably have a bunch of them in about two weeks. So, um, but we need to sell a few of them because I got to have a few of them made at a time. And yeah, so there you go. Uh, let's see a couple other questions here that we came upon today that I thought were very interesting. How did the Charlie Christian pickup differ from the ones that came after it? Um, I need to do a video about Charlie Christians, don't I? That's a, one of those pickups I haven't done a video on yet. Uh, let's see. Basically, uh, it's tons of magnet. It's got this weird base plate. Um, and it's like 38 to 40 gauge wire. So the wire is way thicker and the wind count is way lower. And uh, so that means the overall resistance and the uh, inductance of the coil is really low. Like really low. And so, um, 
Yeah, and it has big, big magnets. She's got that. Cool. <clears throat> Our furnace came on because it's really cold at night here. And as you can tell by the video, it's starting to get darker outside. So it's getting a little cooler. Um, Yusuf says, keep it up, man. That guitar sounds amazing. It does. We'll get to that guitar in a minute because I want to tell you guys about some stuff and I want you to try it and tell me what you think. Um, what is the difference between hot rails and cool rails? So... Honestly, I didn't know the answer to this question. I know that sounds really stupid um, that I wouldn't know. But Hot Rails is actually a brand of rail pickups from Seymour Duncan. And I, I knew that, I think. I mean, I, of course, I knew that part. But I didn't really realize that it was just kind of a thing they called it. Um, not just, you know, any rail pickup. I don't know why that that question hit me funny, but... I looked at that and I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I've just kind of always taken, I guess not knowing is not the right answer. I like, I just took it for granted all the time that we always called it that, like the Kleenex of rail pickups, right? Like, but yeah, so there's no such thing as cool rails because hot rails are just a brand moniker like Kleenex. Um, Shaky Blake, can I get away with 13 to 56 strings without widening the nut i use 12 to 54s on my electric holy crap dude oh and tune to a um you two be good and stay safe uh yeah i think 13 to 56 is if you're running 12 to 54s now with no problem probably going to 13 to 56 is probably be just fine that's a lot of tension i would definitely check your setup though um Play the guitar and make sure, we just talked about this in another video, play and make sure that your first position chords, your cowboy chords, uh, are not out of intonation because that would, and make sure you don't have any tuning stability problems with any kind of binding, as long as you don't have those two things. Because when you put a thicker string in a nut slot, it holds it up higher. It doesn't go all the way down in the nut slot. So that could cause some buzzing problems, that could cause some intonation problems in your first position chords. Um, and then of course it could also cause some tuning stability problems because the, the string may not sit correctly in there. Now it depends how your nut is worn. It also depends on, um, how the nut was cut by the last guy as to whether there's room in there for it. So, you know, and the actual shape of it and everything like, you know, so there you go. That, that would be, but just check all that stuff. But as long as it feels fine do it um that sounds more philosophical than i meant it um somebody sent me some european money thanks for the super chat hi dylan no hat today you are like one of the first people one other person i think driddle actually noticed it yesterday yeah i haven't been wearing a hat nope haven't been wearing a hat that's uh just a thing, I guess. I don't know. I am pretty happy about it, too. Um, okay, let's see. Let's get to some questions. Thank you for the super chat. By the way, I can't say your name. But thanks for the European monies. That's cool. And thanks for watching from there. Um, I'll give you some numbers about that later. It's kind of interesting. We were looking at some YouTube numbers today, which I find fascinating. And you will find it fascinating too. We'll get to that in just a minute. How should I connect the wires on a push-pull tone pot, the knob in the middle, on a strat to obtain a coil split on both humbuckers in an HSH configuration? I have a push-pull on the volume pot to add the bridge pickup to the neck humbucker too. Okay, <clears throat> so here's all you have to do. On your... Okay, you know what? Can I show you this? Can I show you this? I think I can show you this. It's just a matter of whether I have this picture handy or not. Uh, I do. 
Okay. Um, now, this is going to be different for your brand of pickups. However, um, the principle will be the same. So, on our humbuckers, um, the slug side starts, the coil starts with the red wire, ends with the green wire. On the screw side, the coil starts with the white wire and ends with the black wire. On any humbucker, it doesn't matter what the color combination is, on any humbucker, if you take these two finish wires from each coil, so the finish wire from the slug coil and the finish wire from the south from the screw coil, and you wire them together and hook them to a ground, then your coil will split. Okay? And that's any pickup. The two finish wires from both coils, if you twist them together and hook them to a ground, the coil will split. So what we do is we end up having the that on a switch if you already have one pickup that's coil splitting then all you have to do is take those two wires that you hook together the finish wires from each coil hook them to the same place on the switch the same one that the other coil split humbucker is hooked and then they will both split at the same time easy as that so just the two center wires the two finish wires, you hook them to the same place that the other coil split pickup is, and it'll do exactly the same thing. Piece of cake. Uh, let's see. All right. I guess that's that's that. Cool. Now, uh, I want to tell you about some cool stuff. Obviously, I got a new guitar. Everybody saw that. Uh, the Carbon Fiber Sable by McPherson. And that guitar is absolutely unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> however, it had Elixir strings on it. And so I started one of my acoustic string tests. I'm doing this one a little different in that I am telling you about it every step of the way as I go. Um, it's not one of those ones where we're doing like six weeks long and doing a big video about it. What I'm doing is I bought like four different sets of strings I'm trying them. I'm playing for a couple of days at a time. And um, I'm actually putting them on Instagram. I'm putting the videos. I'm, I'm playing a little bit every day on Instagram. I'm just telling you, this guitar is so inspiring and I like totally want to play more. And so I'm putting the, these videos on Instagram almost every day. I think today we put one on there. Um... And we, so we've done two sets of strings so far. And the video that you will see is, in the end, on YouTube, is going to be the compilation of all of it. So I'm basically going to do the finale video and the test video all in one. Um, but I figured, well, let's use Instagram then to give, you know, if I'm going to play a couple days at a time. I'm literally only playing like two, three days at a time. You can tell pretty quickly if you like strings or not, right? So the thing about this guitar is interesting. It sounds really, really good. It's, I mean, it's unbelievable. But um, it doesn't need to jangle any more than it does. Um, it, it's, it sounds fantastic. But if you were to lean it really, really bright and jangly with strings, I don't think I would like that. So I already decided, I think, <clears throat> that I don't like 80-20, that I like phosphor bronze on it. Now, the link that I gave you is 80-20. But on your guitar, it would probably be amazing. So in the comments, or in the uh, pinned comment of this video, is my favorite set that I've put on there so far. And they are the Ernie Ball Everlast strings. Um, I do not have any more Phosphor Bronze String Joy strings to try. I tried the String Joy 8020s, but I don't really like, like I said, I don't really like that jangliness to them at all. It, it just... 8020s are like that on any guitar anyway, and this particular guitar leans it a little more. That being said, this is one of those things where I think we, you should, this is what we should talk about here for a second. 
Oops. I'm seeing the it on there, and I'm like, oh, it's still on the screen. I took it off. Delay, whatever. Anyway, um, this is one of the things I think we should talk about. With all this string stuff, and a lot of this stuff, um, strings especially, though, and picks and all that kind of stuff, it can be so relative to the type of guitar. Um, I bought strings that I don't even like. I didn't like the last time I did this on my Brie Love because I thought, oh, well, the guitar is so different that maybe I'll like a string I didn't like before. So you can't just say, well, I, I hate this particular string or I would never use this particular string um, on any guitar because every guitar sounds sounds a little different. They have um, little predominant qualities to them, you know. And with this guitar specifically, it's the jangly high end. It's perfect if the strings are right. It's not as perfect if the strings are wrong. So that's what I'm, I'm zoning in on. The only string I will say I do not, um, I'll never use is um, Elixirs. It came with Elixir nanowebs on it. I, I just don't like the feel. I don't like the slimy feel of it. And after about four hours of playing it, the first day, because I played it a lot, I've been playing it a lot, the, um, they got fuzzy already with the picks. They got fuzzy. And so I, I just can't stand that. So I'm trying some other stuff. But I am trying other coated strings. Um, I'm trying um, these, these Ernie Balls that I have right now. These Everlasts are coated. And they're super, super cool. Really, really fun. Um, really, really fun strings. I let a buddy of mine play it today. And he said... Um, I let him play for a while and he's like, oh, wow, I didn't even know that these were coated strings. They didn't really feel like that, you know, so that's pretty cool. Let's see if we got a couple questions here. Um, let's see. Sorry about the lawn mowing that's happening right outside in the dark for some reason i mean I, I know thursday is lawn care day at this rv park but i feel like it's not usually this late <clears throat> larry perez thank you so much for the super chat sir that's murica money right there too he's from new york um i feel like we've got a jackal video going in the YouTube right now. Okay, I'll get to that. Okay. Um, Larry Perez wants to know, how does the com McPherson compare to your breed love? This is really hard to tell you. Because I, going back, just to give you some background, I've been a Martin person all my life. Since I was a little kid. My dad was a Martin guy. We were a Martin dealer. Like, we sold Martins. I was a Martin guy. I wanted a D28 so bad. And I wanted a D18. I almost bought both of those guitars, actually. The Breedlove was better than the D18 and the D28 at the time. To buy a brand new one. The Breedlove was better. It's so good. That guitar... That guitar was exceptional. This guitar smashes that guitar. Not even close. This guitar is... I cannot even tell you how good it is. And the weird thing is, you would look at it and you'd be like, that cannot be possible because it is not wood. Even if you give me that it's carbon fiber and it's still cool and it does a thing, like Parkers are cool and they do a thing, but it ain't wood. So how can it be so good? I don't know, man. All I know is they did it right, and it is good. It is so good. I've only let one other person play it so far. Two other people. And one of the guys that played it today is a diehard, vintage, doesn't like anything after 1965. Like, this guy is a diehard, vintage guy. 
and I let him play it. And his analogy was this. He said, he picked it up and he started playing it. And he said, when I first started playing it, I felt like I put a bat suit on or something. Like you're just like, like, and you're all of a sudden a superhero because it's so space age feeling. And he said, and as I played it for 10 or 15 minutes, that just completely went away. And I, because the visual impression of the thing and how it feels in your hand and everything, it's so weird at first. And he said, and after 10 or 15 minutes, it completely went away. And I just felt like I was playing a really good acoustic guitar. Um, and I think that's what happened. I mean, obviously, guitar people are v visual people just as much as they are audio people. And so you see this thing and you just think it can't be. Um, and he put it back in the case a half hour later. He would not put it down for a half hour. And he put it back in the case and he looked at me and he goes, okay, you got me. He's like, I had no idea that this was even going to be possible. Or, I mean, it is, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. Um, it's absolutely insane. Um, Sheldon Calvin says that he wants to send me some whiskey. Dude. Um, that would be amazing. I need a bottle, actually. Right now. Uh, this is perfect timing. <laughs> I actually don't have any whiskey. Well, I shouldn't say that. I have a couple bottles of whiskey, but I and I have a bottle of scotch. But the two bottles of whiskey that I have, well, they're bourbons, first of all. And they are set aside for a special occasion so I can't drink them. And then the other bottle I have is a bottle of scotch that, you know, you just can't have that every night. So, Sheldon Calvin, uh, go to Dylan Talks Tone, the website. And hit the little um, contact button and get in contact with me. And um, maybe we'll arrange some sort of a trade. I don't know. Somebody wants to know why you haven't played it yet. <clears throat> I will tell you a story about how cool Leslie is, though. So when I, when I bought this guitar, I, I, of course I didn't plan on buying it. It never happens like that, right? You're like, I'm planning on buying this thing in a couple of months. I need to save up some stuff. I need to sell a thing. And then I called McPherson and I'm talking to them about coming on the YouTube channel and doing an interview with us and also going and touring their factory, completely unrelated to purchasing a guitar. This is how this went down. And, and I said, uh, but I, I told him just kind of off, you know, off the topic. I was just like, but I am saving up. I, I want one. Like, this is like my dream guitar. And he said, he said, what, if you could have one, what would it be? And I told him, I want satin hardware and I don't want gold hardware, but I want gold frets and I want the honeycomb top, but you don't have that as an option. And he says, actually, I have one of those right here. And I was like, really? I was like, I didn't even know you could get it like that. And he's like, no, I got one right here. Um, he said, do you want to buy it? If you want to buy it right now, I will ship it <laughs> today. <laughs> and so that's what happened. I bought it right then and I ended up with it. It was like a completely crazy, crazy thing. Um, and what's cool about it, Leslie's like, what does that have to do with me being cool? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the reason is because I'm on the phone and I'm like, I knew I was X amount of dollars short from saving up. And I was like, on the phone and I'm like, Leslie, he has the guitar right there that I want. I think I might have to buy a guitar today. And I get back on the phone and I'm like, well, you know, of course, I got to move some money around and whatever. And I got to and she's and I hear her in the background. Do you want me to just transfer the money right now? Would that make it easier? I'm like, yes, yes, that would make it easier. So she's cool. She's just, she's cool. We keep her a lot. We'll keep her for a long time. We'll keep her for a long time. Um, ZR Land says, I came in late. What brand of carbon fiber guitar? Uh, McPherson. McPherson Sable. If you follow our channel, uh, Zierland, sorry about your name, dude. Um, you'll you're gonna see a bunch of bunch of videos about it. I will be talking about it a lot. Um, 
So yeah. So here's um, so here's a couple of things I want to talk about. It's getting towards the end of the year. Um, every year, and I probably should like title this in its own video, but we've got a few minutes at the end of this video. I just want to talk to you about this. Oh man, Leslie made coffee. That might be even cooler than buying a guitar right now. I need some coffee so bad. Okay. Oh man, that is good. Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> every year, um, I spend some time in the early part of December looking at the YouTube channel and I, I look at numbers and I look at, uh, you know, where we're going and what we're doing and how we're, how we're doing and all that kind of stuff. And a couple of things I'm super, super excited and very proud of. One of them is I'm really, really proud of, first of all, before we get into numbers, numbers, I'm really grateful for all of you who watch every week. And I'm really proud of everybody that keeps coming back. Like it's, it's like, a we are building a community here. And the Facebook group on fa on on our on Facebook is growing. Um, it's a nice place to be. There's nobody mad at each other. Do you know I left almost every guitar building and pickup building group on Facebook this week. I was done. I'm like, and this is a part of what I'm about to tell you. I am done with grumpy guitar people. I'm done with grumpy guitar ness. All of it. Um, what I'm learning is that younger people want to watch our stuff. Younger people are interested in our stuff, but what they're interested in is creating. We have spent five years nerding out about stuff, about capacitors and all that kind of stuff. And it's good. We need to continue to learn that and we need to, con but, but what we need to do is we need to work it into how to actually make sounds come out. Not just the technology of the gear itself. I want to talk to people that are making music. I want to talk to people that are making guitars and pedals. And I want to... I said this in a live video on my Facebook yesterday. While most of the guitar industry continues to look backwards um, for their inspiration. Classic instruments. Classic music old rock stars, whatever. I want to look forward. I feel like young people, in fact, I know our demographic, our fastest growing demographics on the channel are 18 to 25 and 25 to 34. Um, it used to be our major demographic on the channel was 45 to 56 or whatever, whatever that demographic is. It's getting younger, which is amazing. Because that means that people continue to want to play guitar, not just us old dudes, which I think is really, really cool. You know, there's lots of us here, even right now, in uh, the, the group that are chatting right now, who have been playing guitar for 30, 40, 50 years. But um, I've been playing for 35, I think. So um, I just think it's so cool uh, that younger people are wanting to play. And I want to also give a shout out and gratitude and thank you for our foreign viewers that watch from other countries. And I know that it's harder for you to buy our pickups. I know that it is harder for you to participate in our give giveaways. I know that it is more difficult because of distance. But I am grateful that for you, all of you, 50 four or five percent of our viewership that do not live in the United States. Thanks for watching this stuff. Um, I really appreciate it. So I am really, really, really driven to create some really cool content in 2021. Um, that's all I'm, that's all I really want to say about it. But I'm just, I was just looking at numbers and I'm just like, man, this is so fun. Like it's, but what's fun about it because I'm going to I'm going to be very straight with you. I've been getting bored with making 
nerdy guitar videos. I mean, how many times can we talk about this stuff over and over again? And buying this new guitar and getting, I got another thing happening right now that I did not tell you about, that I'm not telling you about yet, maybe until next week, that is also happening um, with some other guitars that's very cool, that will probably turn into a giveaway that's groundbreaking and mind-blowing for this channel, um, that is going to appeal to younger people players as well as well as us older ones who have a particular view of the world i'm just super stoked about it um i'm super stoked i just i am um really really happy about how it is all going and i appreciate i appreciate it uh did you just tell him tell somebody how old i am yeah i'm 28 yep i've been 28 for couple years <clears throat> so yeah and i want you all to be a part of it we need to get to fifty thousand so i can give away these guitars man i i gotta get them out of here so we need to definitely share videos and such you've been playing since 1966 that's really really cool that's really cool i'm glad that you can get a guitar now for cheap money and it have it be good just kidding um no that's really awesome and i i'm really stoked about some of the stuff i want to i want to share one of the things um one of the things i want to do is we're gonna and i'm inspired by this whole new guitar thing we're going to talk about recording um using garage band um, and I'm actually going to play, so there is that, because everybody's like, I thought you were a guitar person and you never play. Yeah, I don't. You know why? Because, um, contrary to popular belief, if I had one guitar to own and could not own any other guitars, and you could give me a choice of anything in the world, at this point in my life, I already own it. That McPherson Sable. I wouldn't need an electric guitar. I wouldn't need an amp. I wouldn't need pedals. I wouldn't need any of it. The only reason I have it and play it and talk about it is because it's what my business is. Not to say I don't like it because I absolutely love it. But if you're going to give me the choice of one thing to play and be inspired by, it's going to be an acoustic guitar every day. I love acoustic music. Love it. I also love Stevie Ray shredding, but I love acoustic music. Absolutely love it. Not like the beard, banjo, hey-ho kind of acoustic music either. I mean like um, good acoustic music. Anyway, so um, thanks for all the nerdy videos. Dude, we are going to have nerdy videos. I promise you, those are not going away. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you, and I'll let everybody get going because it's getting to be about 40 minutes. The other thing I wanted to tell you uh, is, so get some questions. If you have questions, get them in right now, and I'm going to give it one more scan here in a minute. Um, I bought an amp. Remember last week, I told you I could not buy the boss next tone special because of the physical size so i bought the next tone stage instead so there's three sizes there's the stage which is the 40 watt 112 i think there's the artist i think which is the 80 watt 112 and then there's the special which that's the one i really wanted because it was like two amps in one but the physical size of the cabinet was huge and, you know, we just, we don't have room here. So, um, I bought this stage, the 40 watt stage. It should be here tomorrow or Monday. I don't know. I need to track it, but it's coming from Sweetwater. So we will do some amp stuff. Um, and also of course, give away some electric guitars and some more electric guitars. Here's what I'm going to tell you. We need to get to 50,000 subscribers. 
Otherwise, these guitars are going to pile up. And when I say pile up, I mean I have more than two guitars to give away. But I'm not giving away any more until we hit 50,000 subscribers. When we hit 50,000 subscribers, chances are there is going to be a flood of free guitars. When I say flood, I mean like a few, not like a hundred, but I mean a few. So just keep that in mind when you're sharing videos and telling people to subscribe to my channel, because when we hit 50,000, I've got at least two, but there's going to be more. And I don't think I'm going to wait 10,000 the next time because it's getting too much fun around here to give guitars away. So I think you need to know that. Uh, let's go ahead and give this one more scan. Have you ever played any Dr. Z amps? I have. I blew one up one time. Um, easier than I thought. Fingeries. You liked fingeries. All the links for all that stuff in the description. Um, less covidity. Yes. Uh, and if you're going to send me whiskey, I have two bottles of rye already, so I'm not looking for rye. But I'm also not going to turn away whiskey because I'll try a different rye too. Um, Y'all hit that like button. Exactly. So likes and comments are, are big things for me because they actually do help the algorithm know that you're excited about the video. So, and I see thumbs down Frank is here too. Um, what are the difference between blackface full filter tried pickups and the high sensitive ones? Um, they are wound a little different and I think the magnets are different also. They're just a different just a, a different wind basically. Uh, let's see. Let me try to bust through here really fast. Yes, you should get an Instagram. That's where I'm going to play guitar mostly. Um, do, 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 do. Dylan's a lumberjack now. Oh, Lumberjack, yeah, because that's the name of the song. Yeah, he plays a chainsaw in the in the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you the video. I posted it on my Facebook a couple days ago. Most carbon fibers guitar that I've played sound like crap. Dude, you've never played one of these. That's all I'm going to say. And here's the thing, three card Monty. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This stuff comes out. You just have to try it. Uh, I'm even telling myself this. Because I have a tendency to like. I don't like that. And then I just never like it. It's not fair. Because I'm telling you dude. <laughs> this thing will blow your. You may not like it enough to buy one. But you might. You, I know for sure. You'll pick it up out of the case. And you'll play it. And you'll go. Oh, yeah, that's surprising. Do I want to own it? Maybe not. Is it my thing? Maybe not. But you will pick it up out of the case and you'll go, oh, I had no idea. At least you will do that. Um, do, 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 do. My favorite tone woods are graphite composite and aluminum. Dude, then let me tell you, you are going to like Dylan talks tone for the next couple months. That's all I can say about that right now. Um, mentally stuck between 18 and 25. Exactly. I'll probably always be there in some sense. How much would you say it does a cover affect the sound of a pickup? It can a lot depending on what it's made of for sure. Absolutely. Where do you stand on Blanton's? I stand on I can't get enough of that stuff because it is too expensive and I can never find it. But I do have about a half a bottle up there. And that is the bourbon that I was telling you about earlier that I 
kind of save because I don't like to drink it fast. Thoughts on the Duesenberg Tremolo? I think it's really cool. I think it's a really interesting take on a vibrato system. I am not going to put it on a guitar that's not a Duesenberg. I would rather have a Bigsby because I like them and I'm very good at setting them up. But Duesenbergs are very, very cool. They are very cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, what's the best way to attach sanding paper to a sanding beam? Go to Harbor Freight and buy sticky back sandpaper and then just stick it to it. And then you just take it off when you're done or when you wear it out. That's the easiest way. All right. You guys, this has been fun. Thanks so much for hanging out and uh, being part of Dylan Talks Tone. Oh, also, we have a really cool video coming out in 15 minutes. I almost forgot. We, almost, we have a really cool video coming out on our Music and Mascara channel. I'm going to put the link to it here. Um, so just so you know, if you're new to the channel, we have another YouTube channel that is... Leslie and I, as we travel, because, you know, we live in a motorhome and travel all around and all that stuff. Um, and we come out with a video at 6 o'clock on Thursdays. It just makes it easier. You're already here. You just click right over there. Boom. You're watching another video and you're helping us out. So uh, you'll have to definitely check that out. It'll be um, over there. Yeah, I can leave the car, the guitar in the car. It can get cold. It can get hot. It doesn't matter. And here's the other crazy part. I put a new set of strings on it this time last night. I tuned it once, played it all day, let my buddy play it, played it some more.